All right, howdy guys. Uh, I just wanted to make a quick kind of filler video explaining the Titan fight as a whole. Just for those of you that are maybe just getting to the fight or are just curious about what's actually happening throughout the fight. You can use this as a guide if you want. I'm probably going to have some sort of like clickbaity, like maybe trendy kind of title. Might make this an actual thing if this goes well, but I just want to discuss the fight. Uh, I apologize for the kind of shitty quality. As you can tell, there's like you just like wholesale Windows Movie Player. My uh, my OBS was fighting with me about trying to record this, so I kind of had to just like ghetto it. Um, but uh, in case you're wondering on the fight, uh, you know this video is here. Uh, it's about a 13 minute long counter. I believe this counter took us 13 and a half minutes. Um, there's just a lot of shit going on in the fight. A lot of people say it gets progressively easier throughout the fight. There's a the final phase requires a lot of focus, but overall isn't super hard. If you pay attention, but we'll get to that when we, you know, when we get there, about 30 minutes. I don't really have a script I'm going off of. I didn't really rehearse this. I kind of just said, hey, well, fuck it, let me just record. I'm just bored. So, uh, I'm going to be constantly pausing the video as we go through, explaining things um, as they as they go out. So, uh, overall, this is a really enjoyable fight. So, those of you that are going after this, good luck. Just know, this fight's, like, stupid hard. <laughs> so, uh, before you pull, you need to set a few things up. One, you need to assign, um, parties, uh, light parties, basically. Uh, you need a tank healer, and then two DPS, uh, to a north and south party. The DPS to a north party, I recommend being your melees, and the DPS to your south party, I recommend, uh, being your range. Um, but we'll, I'll tell you, uh, I can explain the reason to that as to later. Uh, the, but the mechanic is basically for Uplift 2, and it helps assign Healer Jail placements for Phase 2. Additionally, you can also assign uh, one a number 1 through 8 for each party member to help, the, to help assign the first mechanic. Um, but you can also just feel that out. Uh, our party did have numbers. Uh, it's to help you decide who's going to which square for the very first mechanic, for example. Uh, it, it will basically tell you which square you're on. So if you're one, you'll be in this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Those, those will be the squares that you are going to be in for the first mechanic. Or for the first real mechanic of the fight. And these uh, numbers here, or sorry, the letters here only help for uh, crumbling down. Uh, which is pretty quick into the fight. So he's going to open up with um, a Stone Crusher Tank Buster. It hits three times, with a small delay between each, in between each hit. Uh, our tank's kind of messed up a little bit here. But, um, yeah, it does a lot of damage. Like, uh, Koei here didn't have any uh, cooldowns, but from full HP, that's a lot of fucking damage and hits three times. So, if you do the mechanic legitimately, you, you get a hit, you swap, the other tank gets hit, and then they swap again. Then the other tank needs to be healed up enough so that they can survive the third hit. Uh, what we usually do is that uh, our warrior just pops a, uh, I believe he pops uh, raw intuition and um, thrill of battle for the first hit. And then invulns the second and third one because of the delay. It act the attack lasts longer than home gang is actually up. It'll literally fall off just before the third hit hits you, and then you take 40,000 damage and you die. Like, 400,000 damage and you just blow up. It's a bit upsetting. Yeah, that that was, uh... What was that? I saw... I think I saw something there. It was, I couldn't really see very well. Not... Uh, I haven't stared at the uh, buff bar for too long. So, uh, I was assigned five for my number, so my goal is to aim for this one... For this square here. In this mechanic. So what's happening right now is that um, all the oranges are about to explode just like normal mode. But every single party member currently has a yellow pyramid above our heads. That means that when that mechanic resolves, we need to be in a square by yourself. Nobody can share the square. Or else they're going to take the same damage that you take. And it's going to give them uh, magic vuln. Um, and since all of these deal magic damage, if you share a square with anybody who also has a yellow, both of you are going to die. So these will go off first, and then we're going to move. So now there are two evil arts going out, just before the um, yellows resolve. 
Uh, Evil Earth works just like how they did on normal mode, except there's now two and there are no telegraphs besides the first spot. Uh, there's four combinations they can appear in. They can appear in the spots like this. They can be mirrored so they're, they are in these two spots here. Or they could appear in opposite corners, like here and uh, all the way in the... Um, if it's in, like, the northeastern corner, there'll be one in the southwest. Or that will be mirrored here and all the way over here. Uh, the, it looks way more complicated than it is. Uh, everyone here is going to go to A. Because uh, the second explosions are going to be uh, here and here. So this will be safe, and then we can move in because the final burst will be the entire outside of the arena. And uh, if it's in the corners, uh, you just go to the opposite corner of which the first one is. But I, I can't really show it off here since we, this mechanic only happens once. So the yellows resolve. The first burst were here. The second burst, we're going to move into the thing here. All these oranges mean that you need to sh share your square with someone to, with somebody else. It, usually you want to share them with another um, orange square. But you can also share it with somebody who doesn't. You just got to make sure somebody doesn't have a differently colored marker. It's like a pseudo stack marker, kind of. So that resolves, and now there's a voice of the land, which is just the raid wide. So it's a little bit of a little bit of a heal stressor there. So now he's going to use Geo Crush. He's going to jump to a random square on the outside of the arena. It's telegraphed, so it's not that big of a deal. The only problem here is that this knockback is massive. It's like two and a half squares. Like you need to aim for uh, a, like the other side of the fucking planet. So he's jumping to. The one right here. We would basically want to aim ourselves to the northeastern corner if we didn't all sure cast an arm's length. So now he's going to go into a random phase. He's either going to go into his car phase or his um, fist phase from normal mode. And in addition to that, five people are going to be marked with, orange, with the orange cubes. And three people are going to be marked with the yellow pyramids. Since it's car, everyone's going to get to the side that's currently longer. Just like normal mode. You're going to get to, to the side of him on the side that is longer. All the oranges are going to get next to him so they can maintain uptime. And for simplicity's sake, the people, the three yellows are going to line up DPS, tank, and then on the far end is going to be healer. As you can see, they're all spreading out. Uh... You could put a tank here if it's a range, and then put the uh, range in the second square over. It's just that these resolve relatively quickly, as you see. So it's kind of hard to uh, give that call out and everybody adjust quick enough. So it's going to knock you back. At the same time this knockback is happening, uh, your markers are going to resolve, and the aftershocks from normal mode are going to happen. So as you can see, the markers resolving, and an aftershock appeared in the spot right in front of us. So you have to wait a second and wait for your markers to resolve. And then you're going to move forward because there's about to be an aftershock on this row right here. And at the same time, Titan is casting Fault Line. This is a proximity-based dash towards his primary aggro target. Uh, if you're not a tank, you're dying to this. Even if you are a tank, if you're too close to him, you're dying. So, what we do is that we have uh, everyone except for the main tank, who is currently Chloe, stand on the second line with the first Aftershock hit, and have the main tank run onto the same line that Titan is currently on. I also, uh, as you can see, Chloe also popped uh, Rampart and Shelltron for that, because it, it's a, a pseudo-tank buster? Like, it, it did, uh, what was it, 50k? Yeah, it did 50k. It, it, it fucking hurts. <laughs> So, you just gotta be a bit patient on that one. So, immediately after, he's gonna cast Magnitude 5.0. It's the same um, donut AoE from normal mode. You just have to quickly get into Titan's hitbox. At the same time, everyone's moving in. Everyone's gonna get yellow pyramids, which means, again, be in the square by yourself. Do not share it with anyone. So, you, you all get in. You're all gonna get healed. 
get to about a, a little over 70k and just, just quickly spread out uh some people like to assign clock positions for that me and the crew just yellow it like we don't we just say just don't be in somebody else's square forehead so after uh each of the fate each if after the first phase, no matter which combination you get, he's then going to follow it up with crumbling down. What you what you do here is that all the DPS will stick to the southern side of the arena. All the, the tank skills will stick to the northern side. If you get marked with the first set, you will go to see if you are the DPS like Sonic is here. I can't tell who's the northern one, is it? Jean is Jean. Jean over here is at A because... Uh, they were the first one there. Scar is the second set, and Maeve is the second set as well. So they're going to move over to their deep DPS to stay south, so Scar is at D. Tank Stealers stay north, so Maeve is at B. And you have to move over to this side because um, the markers leave behind proximity markers. That, that side hits, and you have to quickly run to the other side. Try to stay stacked for heals as all this is happening. So, now that you're on this side, you're now having Cobalt Bombs fall onto the arena. They will spawn in the middle first, then randomly on the west or east side. If the second set falls on the side you are currently on, you need to switch sides. You don't, you don't technically have to, it's just that it makes the next mechanic a little bit easier. So, the one, the one this rock is not about to break, so we hide behind B, we line of sight Seismic Wave. And then you wait a split second, you wait for these explosions to go off. Of course, Chloe just tank privileges it. It gives you a Vuln stack, damage down, and uh, healing received down. So it's really big inconvenience, especially considering he follows all that up with a, uh, with a, with a uh, raid one. So, it's pretty punishing, which is why I recommend you play it safe. Uh, if you do have to switch sides, you do lose a little bit of uptime. But... You don't do any damage when you're dead. So, so there's another uh, Stone Crusher here. This is the final Stone Crusher for like 10 minutes. So, just invuln it. Just hollow ground gameplay here. There you go. Also, if you have a Paladin, it makes it a lot easier. Healers, if you have a Dark Knight in your party, save Benediction for them, for the love of God. Because <laughs> they will cry. So, uh, ooh, I think, uh, yeah, you guys get to see the next, um, uh, Geocrash done legitimately. So, if he went into car phase first, everyone has to do the second Geocrash legitimately. Because your sure cast won't be off cooldown yet, it still has 15 seconds to go. If he does fist phase first, uh, arms length and sure cast will be off cooldown. Tanks still do the second one legitimately. Because it makes a mechanic in Phase 2 so much easier. So I'm staying really deep into the square. Yeah, it's, it's a massive knockback. So same thing as before, except since it was car first, he's now going to go into Fist Phase. So you get onto the same row that Titan is on. And the same ordering as the uh, as the car phase. Orange is next to him. DPS in the, in the second spot here. Uh... It, uh, Jean is on the uh, third one out, and I think... I can't tell which healer is with this. Anyway. Uh, I can't see because I'm actually fucking blind. So after the uh, landslides go out, move out. It was, um... It was Mabel the way out. Uh, Thalia was with us. So now there's a raid wide. You just had to get out of the middle row that you were just on after the markers, by the way, because there's an aftershock right there. So, so make sure you're stacked up for heals. He is now going to cast Landslide. You have to tell where he's jumping based on where he looks. So he looked towards straight west, which means we have to be either at B or D. It's a uh, cross formation based on where he's at so you can be here or here as you're about to see or you can do that on the other side as well uh like where Inigo is over here so all that goes out at the same time there are rocks dropping 
it will either be an X formation or a plus formation. We have a um, plus formation here, so you're going to lose a little bit of uptime. So you have to get close to him. You wait for the landslide to go out, and then you dodge into the AoE as it happens. If the plus formation happened like this is here, the plus formation is going to explode first, so you have to get away from him. If the X formation happened, then you stay close to him until the explosions happen. So we're going to move up to this rock, because that's going to get us out all the AoEs. And now we're going to move mid, because the other rocks are about to explode. If he did this formation first, this is where uh, crumbling down would happen. But since this happened second, uh, we're just he's just going to fucking leave. Uh, Mr. Happy said that you want to be at around 68%. You can get away with... Um, Around, like, 72. Um, I honestly... Uh, the best I've gotten is, a, is 68, but it happens so infrequently that I wouldn't really bank on that. So, uh, make sure your tanks have aggro going... Both your tanks are top 2 aggro going into this phase. Because not long as his phase, he's going to use a uh, double tank buster that goes onto the two highest aggro targets. So just double check your aggro now. So he's going to open up with Earthen Fury. It does not have the dot from normal mode yet. It's just a shit ton of raid-wide damage right now. Uh, I'm holding Adol right now uh, for a Earthen Fury later on. Because uh, this one is just by itself. He doesn't combo with anything. It's just a lot of damage. So he's going to use Earthen Fist. You need to keep an eye on which fist glows. So his um, his right fist is currently glowing, so he'd want to get to this side of the arena. Because he's going to punch on that side first. And then you have to see again if the other fist starts glowing or not. If it does not start glowing, he's going to punch this side of the arena twice. If it does start glowing, he's going to punch this side of the arena and then this side of the arena. So punch one. That entire half of the arena, you would you'd be dead. At the same time, a, um, uh, whatever the name of that attack is, the orange AoEs are going off. Uh, after, the, if the two, if both fists started glowing, you have to keep an eye on the other side to figure out, uh, where you need to move on that side. If it's the same side, then you just stay on your same side and just move. Like, we got an easy combination here, just move forward. Now it's going to he's gonna create a blue AoE in the center. It's the same blue AoE that we've had in fucking Titania, Sephiroth, Seriu, same exact AoE. And so it's a knockback at the same time, someone is a non-tank is going to get a a blue pyramid. This is gonna hit your the square you are on and all the squares connected to it. So if uh it uh I think this is Thalia who has it. It would hit this square and all nine squares around it. Every single blue in this fight wants to be in a corner because it only hits four squares. Everyone else wants to be on the other side away from the blue. You're about to see the blue explode. This is the blue explosion right here. You can be in it and it doesn't really matter. It helps build OB. It's just easier on the healers if you don't get hit. At the same time this is happening, you can see some cooldowns being popped, because that's supposed to be a tank buster on both tanks. Yeah, it does a lot of damage. At the same time, like immediately afterward, he's going to start casting Megalith. This is a split damage tank buster. It looks like a stack marker. That's a Jebate. Uh, I think Jean uh, does um, home gangs this. So, it... It's... Still hurts like a goddamn truck, so just stack up, pop cooldowns, and pray, I guess. So he's going to use uh, tectonic, tectonic Uplift. The strat that uh, our team uses, and I'm pretty sure this is the one you're going to find in all the party finders as well. On the first Tectonic Uplift, all the DPS are going to go to the northern, that's the northern side of the arena, and all the tanks, the tanks healers are going to go to the south side. The orange AoEs aren't exactly damage areas. It indicates which platforms are about to be lifted. On the first tech on the first cast of this, 
If you are not blue, you want to be in the orange AoEs on your half of the arena. So I'm not blue, so I'm going to stay in the orange. Uh, Inigo here is blue. He's going to go, he's going to stay down and stand in the corner over here. That's going to pick us up, and it's going to explode blue over here. Everyone who's currently up is going to get a differently colored marker. Uh, if there's an orange, a yellow, and a blue on, on both halves. If you are blue, you're going to stay up and go to the far corner of the arena. If you are orange, this this depends on uh, which... Um, hmm. This changes depending on uh, what strat your party finder uses. This is just the strat that I personally find easier. If you are orange, you will go to the platform that has... Uh, two safe areas. If you are yellow, you will go to the uh, half that has three safe areas. So there are two um, safe areas here. The oranges are going to stack in this square here, while the person who just got the magic volt is going to stay right there. If they try stacking, they're going to fucking explode. Uh, there are three safe areas on the other side of the arena. The two yellows will spread in two of the safe zones, and the and the former blue is going to remain in the uh, in a square by themselves, so they don't explode. So, you're going to see all of it. That sounds complicated, it's really not. The blues here, the oranges are over there. The yellows are, uh, yellows in the former blue are over here. And then there's a blue all the way over here in the far corner. Now, after that, everyone's going to quickly get mid. And, uh, just stack for heals. I addled that one because it's a little bit harder to, um, to heal there. So... He is now going to use Rock Throw, which is an which is just a throwaway attack that indicates a uh, a pseudo phase transition. Healers are now going to go to the far north and far south sides of the arena. Uh, they want to be uh, like in the front row and the back row, respectively. Like Folly's the way over here. Um, Maeve is just hanging out in the back over here. He's now going to raise a fist. Depending on which, like, uh, fist he raises is going to determine which half of the arena he's going to slam. He's raising his right fist, so over here is about, one of these halves of the arena is about to just no longer exist. So everyone's going to lean over to the right side of the arena in anticipation for either side breaking. At this point, both healers are about to be jailed. If they are, if the jails are too close, they will gain defense up, and you will wipe. Depending on which half of the arena he breaks here, the back half uh, in this case, well, is going to indicate which healer you have to save first. He's going to target the healer adjacent to the, in the quadrant adjacent to the one that he just broke. So he broke the southwestern quadrant here. So he's going to break the southeastern one there because a healer is in that one. So we have to quickly break this gal. We are under timer from both explosion and plate fracture. So we're going to break that one now. Everyone's going to quickly run to the other one before plate fracture goes off. That's going to break the southern one now. Now we have to hit save the second healer. Be careful about this final plate fracture. He still, he doesn't target the where the gal was, he still targets the healer. So, uh, we were in the northeastern one there. If we killed the gal too quickly and the healer moved over to the over here, he could start up the animation to destroy this one. So, still pay attention to which play fracture he uses here, just in case your DPS is a little bit too high. And now he's going to use another Earthen Fury. You usually have um, LB3 here. You have until about the end of the next attack to use it. Tumult's hit five times for 20k each. So, you know, just heal up. <laughs> heal up, shield, mitigate, all that good shit. There's not too much I can really say there. I reckon the feints are go out. Uh, vengeances are nice. All that stuff. Dual Earthen Fists is the same mechanic as before. The knockback, the blue marker, and, and the um, 
and the two in the uh, in the busters. He doesn't do Megalith on this one. He then follows up with Earthen Fist. It's the same. It's the same fist rule as before, except now he combos it with Evil Earth. This combination is actually the hardest one. So let's say he started here, but he started charging up both sides. Like I say, he charged up this fist first, and then this fist. You'd want to move into the Evil Earth. He, the order of the punt, the order of the attacks is that he does one punch, the first burst happens, the second punch happens, then the second burst happens. So if you've charged up the two opposite ones, you can move into the first burst. If it spawns on your side and both fists are on the other side, you can just move into the first burst. This this combination. We want to get as far away from the Evil Earth as possible and move into the second burst. This, I, it's really hard to explain this mechanic properly. You kind of just have to like watch VODs and just figure out what's happening, go into the fight, feel it out yourself. The split second you figure out how it works, it's pretty easy. So, Tectonic, tectonic Uplift 2, this is where our parties earlier were assigned for. Uh, the reason why we have our range in the back is so that they can maintain uptime on the boss easier while pre-positioning for the mechanic. So make sure the healers need to get to the far corners of the arena, just like on the inside, like um, like the like the jail is about to spawn right now. So that um, on the other side, the melees can stay in their own squares while DPSing the gal, because right like. Immediately, we're all about to get uh, yellow markers. So, including the healer's jail, they're also going to get yellows because, you know, nice. So, they have to be topped off, but people have to be topped off before they get jailed. You have to quickly DPS down your jails. Now, randomly, both tanks or both healers are going to be marked for blue markers. The first blues need to go down, and we have it set up so that they'd go horizontally. Remember, all blues will always go to the corners, as you see Thali over here doing, and uh, Maven's also doing over here. So, as you can, as you saw for a brief moment over here, there's only one safe zone, but over here there are two safe zones. That one safe zone over here is only for the former blue. Over here. There are two safe zones where they're going to need to decide very quickly uh, where the former blue is going and where all the oranges are going. The current, the new blues are to stay up and go to the corner, which should be the tanks or healers that didn't get selected before, and all the DPS are going to be select are going to get orange markers and need to quickly get to the correct side. And again, just like earlier, get to the center for heals, and that's uplift two. These seem very complicated. They're not. It's just practice. You just gotta learn what to look for. And then Tumult, same mechanic as earlier. If you got faint, use it. Heal, shield, all that good shit. There's not too much you can do here. So now he is going to use Plate Fracture again. Just get to the side that they're, you're guaranteed not going to get knocked off on. Like the right side on this one. He's now going to use Megalith again. So, tanks, pop cooldowns. I, uh, let's see here. I see, uh, Vengeance. And I see, I see Faint. And I see Rampart and Sheltron. So, yeah. Get, be pretty fucking, like, pop a good amount. That shit hurts. So now, here comes a pretty difficult mechanic. He's now going to use Plate Fracture again. This Plate Fracture is not going to resolve until just after uh, people are done positioning for this mechanic that's about to happen at the same time. So he's uh, raising his right fist, so this back platform is about to go. If he raised his other fist, th the front platform over here would go because he would attack a platform adjacent to it. Uh, so, at the same time, three people are about to get marked with a yellow, one person is about to get marked with a blue, and four people are about to be marked with oranges. 
the way our group handles it is that oranges will get as close as possible to the boss so we'll get like to this square right here uh blues will get as southeast as possible and the yellows have to quickly decide how to spread around the orange uh, around the oranges So we have a yellow right here, yellow right here, and a yellow right behind here. And all the oranges are right here. The final platform in the back just went out. And there's somebody in the very back over here. All these resolve. And now everyone's going to stack uh, up for heals because this Earth of Fury hits like a goddamn truck. Because like, fuck. Immediately after all those markers and then he just Earth of Fury's you. Uh, do not let up on the heals because there's about to be another Earth of Fury. Immediately after his orange genesis. All Earther Furies now have the Almagus dot attached to them. I usually add all this when I just forgot here, I guess, because I'm stupid. Uh, you usually want him below 30% at this point of the fight. 26 is actually a personal best for us. Um... So now here's phase three. This is the this is the most stressful phase, is you're this far into the fight and he's about to to do literally everything. So all these orange marker, all these orange AOEs, uh, are what we call the first explosion. Uh, they're all gonna stay on the, their current like ring. Either they're gonna be on the inside like this one is. It's gonna go this square this square, this square, and then this square, and then finally this square again. Uh, there are four AoEs on the outside. Uh, they're all, once again, go clockwise. Uh, they're, they're pretty uh, spaced out, though, so uh, the best way to explain this is that this is first explosion, this is second explosion, third explosion, fourth explosion, final explosion. The reason that's important is because while all this is happening, Four people are going to get marked with oranges, and four people are going to get marked with yellows. On the first set of this, the deep, all the DPS are going to get marked with yellow, while the tanks and healers are going to get marked with orange. The way our group handles this is that all the oranges stack in first explosion. One melee will, will get in second explosion, the other melee will get in third, and the two ranged DPS will get on the outside ring. Remember to not move out too quickly because there is still a dot on you. But don't rush this phase. You have way more time than you think you do. Like we just now got marked. So as you can see, there's a DPS here, DPS here, I'm here, the oranges are here. And there's, uh, I think, um, Inigo's over here somewhere. We are carefully spreading all of our uh, AoEs so that none of them overlap each other, nor will we get hit by another explosion. So at the same time, the fourth explosions all happened at the same time as the uh, markers resolved. At this point, if you there are two things that there, there are things that people need to look out for. If you are a ranged. Your job is to now get in without getting hit by another AoE. Which is why I positioned myself right here so that um, I knew the fourth explosion was going to be right in front of me. So I could just move forward the split second this AoE resolved. If you are orange, you now need to move. Do not be in the square you are currently in right now because there's about to be another explosion right there. As you see, all of them are moving because there's an explosion right where they were stacked. That sounds like a lot. It's not. Like, in reality, nothing just happened. It's just, you just gotta pay attention, know what you need to do, and know that you have way more time than you think you do. Do not rush this phase. The only thing you have to be remotely quick with is the final move. And that's just, you you know where you're gonna be at that point anyway. For example, like, I knew I was gonna be in the square over here. And I knew that this was gonna be the fourth explosion. So I'm like, okay, the split second my explosion goes off, I can move forward. And if you're orange, you just stay on the... You just don't be in your square, stick to the center, and you're good. Now, it's, he's now going to do the um, the same mechanic as earlier, except now Baby Titan's here. 
This phase for the main tank is really brutal. Because it's going to do the double tank buster while Baby Titan is still autoing you. So as you can see, a home gang went out because that's just too much damage. It would it would have killed John there if they didn't um, if they didn't uh, home gang. So now we're going into a burst phase. He's going to use Voice of the Land, Tumult, Voice of the Land again, Tumult again, and then Earthen Fury. It's a lot of raid wide damage that you have to be very careful with your mitigation on. Like, we have a Passage going out, uh, we have fucking Mantras going out, we have, um, make sure that Medica has 100% uptime, be careful with your bubble usage. Um, I, uh, usually Adol wouldn't be up right here, I just asked my, uh, I just asked Dolly to throw up a, uh, a Nocturnal Field there, just to make sure everybody, uh, would uh, have the region going into this phase. So, again, you have that nasty dot on you. But now the yellows and oranges are reversed. All the DPS are now going to be marked with orange. And the tanks are going to be marked with yellow. All the oranges are going to go into the first explosion yet again. The tanks need to make sure they stay in the center. So that uh, the melees can maintain uptime. So uh, we just have the tanks spread in the second and third explosion respectively. So you can actually get a better angle of this now. The healers stay mid until the dot wears off. And then they move out because you can't really heal very well on the outside. So DPS will go into this one. And they're going to stay there. Like Jean moves over here. Chloe's going to move into that third one. Fourth AoE. Plus markers. Move out immediately. Immediately after that resolves, look towards Big Titan. Because he's about to do um, dual uh, Earthen Fists again. He's now going to do the uh, both sides glow. Punch that side, move over. There are no AoEs this time, just focus on dodging that. At the s Immediately after that resolves, Titan's going to use Stone Crusher. So, uh, again, Paladins. Bring them along, for the love of God. Hollow ground! <laughs> just, just, just ignore this mechanic. Do yourself a favor, ignore it. Now he's going to use Megalith, Shared Buster, Stack. Please, Stack. <laughs> you do not want to get this far into the fight and then have to wipe because the tanks forgot the Stack. And then another Earthen Fury. It's Earthen Fury, mitigated. He's now going to do the rotation mechanic again. It is the exact same as the first set, so you get to see it again. Tank sealers into that one. First melee DPS into that one. Second melee into the third one. Range preposition yourself. Move. The tank sealers move. You are now in the uh, final part of the fight. You are now just burst him down. Healers, I hope you have mana. <laughs> He's going to do um, Earthen Fists again. Just pay attention again. I won't say on this side. You are now in the soft and rage. He's going to use voice of the land, tumult, voice of the land, tumult, voice of the land, and then the enraged earthen fury. It's as painful as it sounds. Make sure you have a fuck ton of mitigation. It's here where it's really nice to know how your buffs specifically work. Like, for example, um, Collective Unconscious here, when you throw it up, uh, the regen is now on you, and you don't need to keep the bubble up to keep the, um, the damage, the damage reduction up. It stays active a little bit after the bubble goes down. I think the same rule applies to Passage of Arms. Uh, try to space them out a little bit. Um, Chloe just keeps it up a little bit longer to compensate. Um, it, this phase is just as fun as it looks. Uh, if you have, this is why I think that 
if anybody dies towards the tail end of the fight and you don't have a summoner or red mage, just wipe it because not only do you have that um, they bring the uh, the weakness, you now also are out like a quarter of a healer's mana, and that is so vital to just making it past this phase. Thali was chugging super ethers like this entire pull, and she's still almost oom. Like it's that bad. But after uh, after the final voice of the land, just nope, malefic glare, fucking broil, and enjoy. Just keep these BSing guys till he fucking decides to give the hell up. And that's the entire fight. I don't know how much sense that made, but um, I feel like uh, I feel like I explained things relatively well. If you have any questions. Um, feel free to leave a comment, or you can go over to my stream. Uh, we're going to be clearing this weekly. TM. Uh, feel free to ask any questions about the fight you have there. Uh, I should be linking my Twitch in the, uh, in the description down below. Um, yeah, I hope to make more guides. It, depending on how you, how you guys, uh, think about this. So, until whatever the hell I make next, uh, see you guys, see you guys next time or whatever.